All right, great. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Um, I'll start sharing the screen. I think Ken will take it away from there. Yeah, I'm gonna let Albert drive. He's got the more interesting, more interesting slides towards the end. Can everybody see the slides? Great. Take it away, Ken. That looks like us. All right. So we're gonna talk about um, this is pretty short. This is we're not gonna use up the full hour, but we'll have lots of time for questions. Um, I'm gonna give a few slides overview about uh, Anton too, because I can't help talking about it. Um, and then Albert will give more details about the enhanced sampling features, which are, which are relatively new uh, in the in the PSC system. Next slide. So the Anton two architecture. There's only I only have like five slides in here, so this is not a deep architecture thing. So there's one slide on architecture. So this is a big parallel machine. Um, there's uh, a 3D arrangement, 3D mesh of nodes shown there on the left. Uh, they come 128 to a cabinet, which is what what uh, what size of the PSC machine has. Um, I guess I should have introduced on that previous page is our 512 node family size unit in um, in in New York that we haven't seen in, the, in an entire year now. I miss it. Um, and then on the right side of the slide is a blow up of one node. And the one node is basically one chip or um, one ASIC application specific integrated circuit. So the in this chip, there's three kinds of things. The, uh, the HTIS, the thing that will screw up your spell checker every time, is the high throughput interaction subsystem. That's the thing that computes the near neighbor electrostatic and van der Waals forces that con uh, constitute 90% of the work in a molecular dynamics simulation. Uh, and it takes about 50% of the area of the chip. And those are hardware, hardware pipelines that are uh, just crafted for that purpose. Then the, uh, the flex boxes, there's 16 boxes. Each one has four processors in it. So there's like a little cluster of 64 processors on each Anton 2 node. Um, and then the X, Y, and Z are the network components that connect to uh, the three dimensions of the mesh. So uh, the first thing to emphasize is that this is this is specialized hardware. Um, so uh, Phil described it as a race car. It's like I'm not sure that's extreme enough. It's more like a it's, it's like a drag racer. It's, it only wants to go in a straight line, and it only goes really fast on lake beds. Uh, so this is all this is all hardware that's built from scratch for a single purpose. The 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 pieces that I showed there. This is not an x86 running Gromax. It's not an FPGA accelerating Gromax. It's not a GPU accelerating Gromax. It does not use InfiniBand. We have our own network. There's no operating system. There's no virtual memory. There isn't even there isn't even DRAM. Your uh, your chemical system has to fit in the SRAMs, which are part of those flex tiles. So the, it's it's uh, an extreme programming environment for us who get to develop for it. Uh, the whole machine is like a big coprocessor that the chemical system gets loaded, it runs for a while, uh, then it unloads it. And at this point, almost everybody asks, why isn't it all hardware? What are you, are you, are you slackers that you put processors in there? And of course, yeah, we are slackers. Um, the, there are good reasons for the being processors in there. One is just a hedge because we might develop new algorithms uh, and we will certainly find bugs that we need to work around. But other, other parts of this are, they're just really well suited to a, a, a processor like the FFT, an FFT algorithm is mostly data motion uh, with, a, with a few uh, multiplies in there. And a processor really does really well at that, load and store instructions and then a few multiplies. It doesn't slow anything down to make a processor. And then there's lots of housekeeping casts that you never think of, like when your atoms move around in the system, they have to be migrated from point A to point B, which takes up an enormous amount of complexity. Next slide. So from a user's point of view, this is this is supposed to look like an appliance. You you provide your chemical system, the uh, with the atoms in the force field. You specify a few options, um, like the ensemble and the, the few critical things that you're going to add including the perhaps the enhanced sampling features that are being talked about. Um, and then you there's a, a prep step where it uh, where we fill out the rest of the options, some of which are some of which are chemical, like what the grid and the cutoffs are, uh, and a whole boatload of which are performance parameters to make things fit 
into those uh, distributed, tiny little distributed memory. Uh, and the prep also includes generating and compiling the embedded code. So this is, uh, it, it actually looks at your chemical system. It looks at the state of the chemical system, like the size from NPT and potentially generates a new executable, a new piece of code to run on all those processors. That's the, that's the prep step that uh, Phil was warning about. And it's really, it really only consumes, uh, you know, 1%, less than 1% of the, the running time if you, you run in hour long chunks. But this is the sort of just in time compilation trick that us developers think is fabulous. And then comes out, everybody else hates it. But that's the way it works. Um, after the prep, you submit the thing to a batch scheduler and off it goes. So the, my last real slide here, I wanted to elaborate a little bit on the, uh, the performance curve that um, Phil was showing as a table. So this is the same number as showing performance in microseconds per day versus number of real atoms. And the black line in there is the exactly that, exactly that table that Phil was showing. But then since we've run this for several years now, we can uh, collect data from real systems that have run on real machines, both, uh, both in PSC, which is the purple dots and at Desres, and see, yeah, this is actually a pretty good estimate of what people get. Um, some, some, some easy systems run faster than predicted and, and there are systems that run slower. There's like a whole, uh, there's 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 a there's a whole lower edge of systems there that are running as much as maybe two x slower than the predicted line, and it depends how many features you turn on and how complicated things are. Like a membrane that has is, that is severely out of shape is slower. Um, if you turn on lots of restraints, it gets slower. But most people come pretty close to the predicted performance, and of course. There, there are a couple there that are really stink at around 150k atoms. I think that one is one where uh, the the trajectory interval was set really small, so it's running at the speed of the disk instead of the speed of the machine. Uh, usually, people discover that and fix that. And uh, that's about it. Next slide. All my pretty, these are, you know, excuses to show pretty pictures. There's the, there's the chip in close up, bigger than real life, assuming your screen is not an iPhone. Albert. Okay. Um, okay, great. Thanks, Ken. Um, so I'm gonna give a brief overview of uh, one of the newer features, newest newer enhanced sampling features we've introduced, tempered binding, um, and begin by going into a little more detail about the adaptive sampling algorithm that underlies tempered binding, as well as some of the other uh, newer enhanced sampling features um, on Anton that we've introduced. Um, so our adaptive sampling approach is called TSS, which stands for time square sampling. Um, it's pretty similar to other approaches, especially uh, simulated tempering, which is a serial form of replica exchange. Um, in, in TSS, uh, just like in simulated tempering, you run a regular MD simulation, but you try to change from you know, one energy function or Hamiltonian to another occasionally, and you continue doing more regular MD between uh, those exchanges, either at this new energy function or the old one, if your exchange attempt was rejected, and then you just rinse and repeat. Um, you know, the simplest example of doing this is TSS in, in temperature space. You know, this is a this is an example of maybe you have a very simple protein system that goes between two states, an active and an inactive state, illustrated by these two different potential wells. And you know, maybe at temperature T1, a lower temperature, you have a very high barrier between those two states. And you, know, you could just run a brute force uh, conventional simulation and hope to surmount that barrier, but the time scale to do that could be very long uh, if that barrier is very high. And so in a TSS simulation, you would occasionally get an opportunity to exchange to a, a higher temperature, T2, which is greater than T1, where that apparent barrier might look a bit lower, and so that transition would be easier. And then, um, at some other point, you might exchange back to that T1 uh, temperature that you were originally at, and now you, you've made that transition to the other confirmation. So essentially, this gives you a way of taking a shortcut 
in, in sort of an expanded state space, an expanded ensemble space, just like simulated tempering and replica exchange. So you could potentially uh, sample events of interest faster. Now, uh, theoretically, you don't have to limit yourself to temperature. You could change anything in that energy function. And among the new features uh, that we've introduced is the ability to do that for things like, you know, the target of a distance restraint or an RMSD restraint. And then you would have um, umbrella sampling. And uh, what underlies tempered binding is the ability uh, to change that energy function. Uh, you can change interactions between, you know, a protein and a ligand or a protein and another protein. One nice thing about TSS, which is not in the original simulated tempering approach, is that um, for those of you who are familiar with simulated tempering, you've got to estimate a free energy weight for each of the energy functions or rungs that you sample at. And that can sometimes be a pain because those can change as you're doing the simulation. And it's sometimes hard to get an estimate of those at the very beginning when you haven't seen a lot of sampling. So uh, TSS has a built-in online free energy estimator that does that for you automatically. And um, this is still a, a work that we're writing up, but uh, hopefully sometime by the end of the year, uh, you'll see a manuscript uh, about the method itself. Any questions about that? I don't know if people are asking online or are waiting to the end, but okay, I'll move on. So uh, one of the applications um, that we've made of, of TSS is uh, tempered binding, which is an ability to help sample the uh, possible um, poses or, or binding complexes of um, two proteins. So one thing that we and others have noticed is that if you just take two proteins, um, separate them out in space and run a simulation to try to get them to come together into their native complex, they often get stuck in these metastable states kinetically for a very, very long time. And one way of potentially alleviating that kind of kinetic trap is to use something like TSS, but instead of tempering temperature, you would temper all of the interactions between those two proteins. So what these dashed lines are supposed to illustrate is interactions between two different proteins that you're simulating and you take some uh, variable lambda and you scale that from one to some value below one, which then scales the interactions between those proteins. And then you do that as a function of time. So in addition, like I was saying before to doing the regular MD simulation, you're also making these moves in lambda space with TSS and visiting these different um, energy functions or rungs where the interactions are scaled. So hopefully if you do that, that will make it easier for you to escape from these kinetic traps and help you sample the true global free energy minimum faster. And here's just one example of this uh, from a simulation we ran of Barnes and Barstar, which is kind of like the hydrogen atom of protein-protein uh, complexes. Uh, Barnes is shown in blue and Barstar is in green. And you know what we first did was uh, the naive thing. We, uh, let's see if I can play this movie. Let me try like this. Oh, here we go. Yeah, the, the first thing we tried to do was just a regular conventional simulation. We just put those two proteins far apart and we let them go. And they came together into a state that was relatively long lived. But because this is the hydrogen atom of protein complexes, we knew what the native complex should be. And then, you know, at the end of this relatively long conventional MD simulation, we compared that to the crystal structure in gray and it was pretty far off. It was, it's off by a, a pretty big rotation. So then we turned on this tempering approach and immediately was able to sample a lot more different interfaces uh, before very quickly seeing it settle down to a pose, which now if we compare again to that crystal structure, we get a pretty good match, especially these important, uh, this important aspartic acid residue, which locks into this catalytic triad on, on Barnes. So this is just one application, but you could imagine uh, doing something like this to help you sample uh, different ways that a ligand might bind to a protein as well. Or different, for example, if you had a protein with multiple domains and you wanted to 
better sample how those domains fit together, you could also use something like this. So I think that's it. Um, any questions about this or other enhanced sampling methods? Uh, Ken, Tomas, and I will, will try to the best of our ability to answer them. Thank you. Yeah, I thought I would just seed this with the, uh, the, the, the text that's actually in the RFP that... <laughs> Uh, yeah, currently we do not have any questions in the chat. So did you want to touch on these? Ken, did you want to do that or? Uh, this is the part where I don't even know what this stuff beats, Albert. <laughs> okay, I can, I can go over it quickly. Yeah, so th these are some of the the, the, the features that are available, you can uh, apply a uniform constant electric field, example of your studying um, the permeation of ions across a membrane in an ion channel. You can put individual uh, position, harmonic position restraints on atoms. Um, you can do simulated tempering with adaptive weighting, which was that first example I, I mentioned this TSS with temperature. Um, you can apply restraints to the centers of masses of groups of atoms, as well as their distances between centers of masses. Um, you can apply conformational restraints or RMSD restraints. And for all of these uh, restraints, you can also uh, pair that together with TSS. So uh, for example, if you were to do it to the target value of the RMSD or the distance restraint, that would be like umbrella sampling. Uh, you can also change the force constants if you want. And then uh, you can also do tempered binding, uh, which is what I, what I just talked about. Great, thank you. Uh, we do have a question in the chat from James. Do you have to bring the two proteins together with some restraining force? Uh, do you have to bring the two, pro you mean for the tempered binding? That, that is a completely free uh, simulation. So, you know, you can start the two proteins uh, very far away from each other and uh, just turn it on and let it go. You don't have to have them started together. Just in that example, it was because we were trying to essentially heal a bad conventional MD simulation where it was kinetically trapped. Great, thank you. And uh, from Vinaya, uh, Regarding position restraints, uh, are, are you allowed to use freeze groups as an alternative to position restraints? I'm not sure I'm familiar with that terminology. Freeze groups? And, and feel free to unmute and clarify yeah. uh, questions verbally. Yeah, if we don't know what it is, then it probably the answer is no. So the position restraints are just a restraint from the atom to the point in space, usually used to equilibrate, as I understand it. Okay, uh, Vinaya, if you'd like to clarify your question, we, we could come back to it. Um, for uh, Mortaza also asked the question, can string method with swarms of trajectories be done on Anton? Uh, I mean, you could probably implement something to do it because that method doesn't really rely on any um, enhanced sampling per se, other than having to restrain at some point, uh, but we don't have it natively implemented uh, as, part, as a method. Great, thank you. And then it looks like uh, Evgeny, um, is TSS available now? Can, can he request TSS simulations in the coming Anton proposal? So it's sort of, it's sort of halfway available now. Uh, you could, it, it's certainly meant to be requested in the, in the current, in the current round of proposals, like, like this text says. It, it in fact exists now, all of the documentation is for crap. Uh, which will hopefully fix this week. If you have an allocation now, you can uh, hopefully start using it in a week or so. 
but but definitely in the upcoming one, uh, people people well basically people could use it now, but they may need to reach out for some some help or 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 for the updated documentation. Ken, right? Um, so certainly for the ones that will come starting December first, um, then then the answer is definitely yes. Right. And I think that would be the, the procedure here is you know, if you are, if someone here does have an allocation now and they want to try this, you know, uh, feel free to reach out um, to us and we can help you, you know, get pointed in the right direction or, or tell you, you know, wait, we'll have some documentation in a week or, or whatever the, the answer is. Was there any other questions? Well, let me go to this, the last slide with the survey then. Thank you. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw the link in the chat. Um, like, like we stated at the beginning, we, we welcome all feedback um, and look forward to hearing from what you, what you liked and what you think we can improve on. Well, if there's no more questions, we'll let everybody go. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, everyone. We appreciate everybody joining. Thank yep. you. Thanks, everyone. If you if you do have follow up questions that you forgot or didn't think of here, you know, feel free to, to send us email at the the Anton Dash Support at PSC.edu. Great job. Thank you.